Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at player props for Game 3 back in Boston here, Nate. Uh, we do have a game video up as well, so I want you to make sure you like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along with us. Uh, we are bringing you each and every finals game, as well as these player props we have for you today. I uh, also want you to head to the lines.com. Make sure you are checking out all the great content Nate and company have up there. Best, best player props, all the sports as well uh, on the lines.com. So head over there. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com. Find those listings in your area such as what we've got for game three play a props nate let's get into it yeah well as most people know right now the celtics are six to zero after a loss in these playoffs and that's usually because they lost because jason tatum had a bad game and then they win because jason tatum has a great game uh he's averaging 32.2 points per game after those losses hitting at least 27 points in each of those games um including you know, in the last two home games of that Miami series, he averaged 30.5 points, eight and a half rebounds, four and a half assists, and shot 22 for 24 at the free throw line. I think that's going to be a key here. Um, he, he had 15 free throw attempts in those two games at Golden State. Definitely tends to average a few more at home in these playoffs, 8.3 per game. As we know, the calls go a little bit more towards the home team and, uh, you know, Tatum going to continue to be aggressive uh, with the Warriors, the way they're they're guarding him, kind of forcing him to go into the lane and play in traffic, which is probably the right move rather than letting him, uh, you know, just free fire those step back threes. But I think he'll do a lot of things for the Celtics, not just score, but 27 and a half points seems kind of low to me. Uh, I wouldn't mind just combining that with the PRA at 40 which is a slightly better odds minus one Oh six. Cause I think, you know, he's, he's, he's around six rebounds or seven rebounds, 6.3 assists at home in these playoffs. So 13 on top of the 27 points you project him for, you know, right on his averages there. I think he, he, he elevates his game a little bit here uh, because the Celtics need this one so much. And, and because of how he's responded after the, after the losses. Yeah, that's fair. And, and I, I was getting ahead of that as well in game two. I mean, if Jason Tatum played poorly last game or they lost last game, he's probably going to play good this game. Uh, that's just been how it is in these playoffs because, I mean, he did play – I don't want to say he played poorly, he shot poorly in game one, um, but he ended up with those 13 assists as we saw. So he's going to be impacting this game. And it's really pretty clear it's between he and Steph at this point for who's going to be uh, the MVP as long as they play even close to as they've been, which which we expect them both to do. I like the PRA as well. Um, I'm not scared of the points. I think he does get the 28, but I, I do like adding the, the rebounds and assists because I've been liking those stats for him uh, for a while now as he's sort of picked up his game and there's a direct correlation between his assists going up a bit in the middle of this season uh, and, and how well they've been playing on offense as well. So uh, speaking of Steph, like I said, it's between these two at this point, in my opinion, even if uh, one of them is not necessarily impacting the game the same way we think. Like Steph, last game, five threes, got the points, got the rebounds. Um, you know, this one, he's we actually we get a point here on his uh, props, his points proper, 28 and a half. This game it was 29 and a half at home. He does average a few more points at home in these playoffs, um, but it's like the difference of 31 versus 29 points. So I'm not too worried about it with at, at 28 and a half on the road uh interesting that you found on FanDuel as well and I'll give you the props there most three pointers in a game in the game Steph Curry is plus 140 on FanDuel very confused about that just as confused as we were that he was going to lead the series in threes from the jump if, when the series started and you, and you took that bet at plus money so um still a little bit seemingly disrespect for, for Steph or maybe there's you, people are afraid of uh the Boston defense but I mean his last nine finals game just starting there 31 and a half points a game five boards six assists for almost basically five threes on 39%. Uh, in these finals, even better, we're talking 31 and a half uh, points a game and six for 13 from three. Uh, so if you, even a few more threes made there uh, as he hit, what, uh, seven and five threes. Uh, and he loves playing against Boston. And, and we've been saying that since the series started as well. Um, Thirty In the last six games versus Boston, the last couple seasons, 30 points, six boards, five assists, 48 and 47 splits. So 48% from the field, 47% from three, six for basically 13 from three point and that includes a game in there he's averaging 30 plus and that includes a game where he he played 14 minutes and scored three points because he got hurt earlier in the season against the Celtics so those numbers are absolutely bonkers he's only scored less than 31 time at, other than that injury game against them so there's no reason to think it's going to stop right now 
Yeah, stuff's just killing the Celtics anytime they go to pick and roll up high. Um, you know, the bigs, one, you know when he's really got to cook him when he gets a big on him and he just creates space out of nothing and, and, and drains. And that's what was happening in that third quarter. The Warriors, it just sparked their confidence so much. I think it's going to be the one thing they can depend on as the series transitions to Boston is Steph creating his own shot, whether it is off, you know, on those step backs or whether it's beating the overplay and getting to the rim. I, I just think it's great value to get that three point bet because, yeah, he averages nearly five threes per game in the finals. Nobody else is going to average anywhere near that. I mean, sure, you could get a spike game from Tatum like in game two. He hit one more than Steph. Uh, or you could get a spike game from Clay on his own team. I, and I'm guessing that's why the odds are where they're at. But that brings me to my second prop here, which is Clay going under 18 and a half points. Uh, I know at some point, you know, he should show out and, and, and break out of the shooting slump, but I just don't think he's been a very much of a positive for the Warriors on either end in this particular series. The Celtics are a tough matchup for him because of their size. Um, and, and because of their quickness when, when they're going to go to that two guard lineup with smart and white, I don't, I don't know if clay is a great uh, defender for either of them. Um, Warriors have so many options to go with here. I don't think Steve Kerr is the kind of guy to just turn his back on, on one of the legends on his team, but he could go Gary Payton. If Iggy's healthy, he can throw him in there. Uh, Jordan Poole started to get it cooking a little bit, gave them more creation on offense than Clay has. Um, and he's just been, like I said, struggling. He shot four for 19 in game two, somehow a net zero in a game that the Warriors won by 20. Uh, in, in game one, it took him 14 shots to get his 15 points. And you look at even the regular season against Boston, like I'm saying, he's, he's, it's a struggle. Averages under 15 a game, four rebounds, um, shooting 34% from the field, 20% from three. He needed 24 shots to get 18 points the last time they faced them in March. And bad home road splits along with most of the Warriors offense takes a big dip. Uh, in these playoffs, he's averaging under three rebounds per game on the road. He's a minus 52 versus plus 77 at home. So I think 18 and a half points or under the 22 and a half points rebounds maybe gives you a little more leeway since he's probably looking at three boards or fewer in this game. Yeah, the conversation uh, in the Bay from from fans, especially because Clay is so beloved, is do we keep playing Clay? And that's what Steve Kerr has to go through: is do I do I remain uh, somewhat loyal to this guy? Uh, do I think that he can pull out of this? Or, or you know, does does Steve Kerr agree with the Coast to Coast Pod uh, that we don't necessarily think Clay is a good matchup for this team? And he never has been uh, he, as good against taller defenders. Part of his uh, entire game is that he is six foot seven with long arms, shooting threes over everybody. He's taller than every two guard that guards him. He's the size of every small forward that tries to guard him, and he can shoot over anybody with the hand in his face it's just not the case right now his, his defense was better in game two um but yeah when you're uh, in, when you have a basically a a, 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 a new like a, a zero net rating uh in a game where your team wins by you know more than 20 25 points uh and you're and you're a starter you know what's going on there and, and so he, he hasn't been able to get the minutes i would take the under bank, bank banking on the fact that um he's going to continue to not play well or shoot well but he, he also might not get as many minutes if jordan Poole is going to play as well as he did on offense um then his liability that he creates on defense is not going to be as big of a problem and Kirk can play a bit more pool. One thing he definitely is not going to do is play the three of them together uh, in terms of pool clay and Steph at this point. So we can bank on that for sure in terms of, an, uh, you know, a few of those guys getting an under not Steph at that point. So we're saying clay and pool um, because those guys got zero minutes together in, in the last game. So uh, I'm going to finish things off here with the guy who I think is going to continue to guard Steph and uh, in, in Derek white and continue to get 30 plus minutes a game, especially if Marcus smarts, not guarding uh, Steph nearly as well as he was uh, Derek white, 14 and a half points and assists combined. You could also do 14 and a half points and rebounds combined. It's the same prop there or just 11 and a half points is even money on FanDuel, he's been getting more than 12. He had 21 in the first, 12 in the second there. Um, and even with that regression, you know, he still was a, a, a decent part of the offense. 12 points, four boards, and two assists. Two for four from deep as he continues to, to make shots. I mean, he's open in a lot of them, but he's just making really good shots right now. And so I think that keeps him on the floor. Uh, and it, it, it's a game where, you know, we were talking about maybe Marcus Smart, maybe Derek White's props, but I, we definitely can't take both, in, in my opinion. And you got to choose one. And I do think Derek White and the way that he's been playing defense on Steph will continue to 
to, to really validate the minutes that I think Udoka needs to give him, uh, which is, like I said, better than 31 in his last six playoff games alone, uh, where he's also averaging 15 points a game and, and three and a half boards or so. So with four assists in there, I think either one of those ancillary stats combined with the points, if you like, or just the points for that even money uh, feel good for Derek White right now. Yeah. And you said he's averaging 15 this stretch for him to score 15 is plus 240 at FanDuel. Another gift. If you have a FanDuel account, uh, this episode is for you. Uh, those two bets between yeah. him scoring 15 and Curry getting, uh, you know, the most threes in the game. You can look at alternate lines on different books here. I think White's prop should definitely be more like 14 and a half points straight up. So that's why yeah. it's fine to combine them with the assists or rebounds. Uh, Rob Williams not being healthy. That is a key note here because he's going to kind of be a token starter. And then the rest of the game might be Derek White's. Uh, along with Grant Williams mixing in there a little bit, but I expect a very short reten- rotation from Boston. Good minutes for yeah. White, uh, and he's just been relentlessly aggressive since the birth of his son. Saw that with Fred Van Fleet a couple years ago. Uh, Papa coming out to earn that paycheck, uh, motivated, and uh, he's hitting his shots because of that. I love it, man. Yeah, it's that's that's the play. Just have a kid before the, the postseason starts. You'll be great, good to go, get a big contract like Mr. Van Vliet. So that is all the time we have for you guys in this one. Make sure you're liked and subscribed to the page. Check out that Game 3 video we have about the, the game analysis and breakdown, uh, as well as this player props video. So until we see you next, happy betting.